discover fish tales. Now I know last time we did animal tales, yes. but we wanted to focus specifically on fish because they make very interesting crafts. Um, some things that I learned while I was doing the research for this is that a fish tail is actually called a caudal fin. So they okay. consider it a type of fin. Um, I learned that it's not the most common uh, fish in Kentucky for fishing, but I learned a little bit about um, rainbow trout. So rainbow trout can be, you can tell what they are because they have that like pink swatch on the side, um, and, but they also have like those black little dots. Um, and they're usually about a foot in size, but if and they're in the right conditions, they can get to be huge. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about maybe a fish you would encounter if you decided to go fishing in Kentucky. And I wanted to talk about a fish that you probably would never want to encounter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but I think it's gotten a bad reputation. And that would be the mighty little piranha. Ah. So, you know, we all have these images of piranhas, you know, that a cartoon character gets in the water and then they're immediately eaten up. Yeah, that that's not really generally <laughs> how piranhas behave. Um, yeah, I know, it's, kind, it's disappointing from a, a story element, but if you actually ever wanted to visit where they live, maybe not the worst thing. <laughs> <laughs> Good to know. Um, there's some piranhas that they actually they only eat uh, plants, um, but most are scavengers. So they'll they'll eat animals, but dead animals are mostly dead animals that they find. Occasionally, you'll get piranhas that are more aggressive. Um, those tend to be, let's see, the red belly piranhas and the black piranhas. Whenever they feel threatened. Um, they may attack, but it's normally when the water is really, really low. Okay. And people are wading through and they're kind of messing with the baby piranha. Ah, so they're protective. They're being protective. Okay. And they also are, they're kind of hungry because the low waters are not oh. good for feeding either. But it, it is, it's more about being protective of their young. So when we see that, that's the behavior we think of as piranha-like, it's them being protective and not so much. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. That's good um, to know. They do pack a bite, though. You really don't want to be bitten by one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't write down how much, you know, there's a formula <laughs> to be able to see um, how strong a bite is and it's pounds of pressure and all that stuff. I didn't write it down, but it's, uh, it's, it's not something you really want to experience. <laughs> um, but what's really interesting and strange about piranha is that they their teeth come in oddly. You know, with human teeth, even with shark teeth, we lose a tooth at a time and then it's replaced, okay? That sharks, from what I understand, it's kind of the same thing. Um, with piranhas, it's like they lose like five teeth in chunks in different parts. <laughs> um, and that's, yeah, gross. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it's how it works for them. <laughs> but it does work out really well for us because the craft that we created, your piranha is going to have some gaps in his teeth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we're very excited about this craft, and so I'm going to turn the mic over to Yolanda for us to practice that. All right. So before we get to that, I'm just going to tell you what it's, this is your bag, and this is what it's going to look like, and it's going to have paper fish, paper teeth, clothespin, Tissue paper, three googly eyes, uh, pipe cleaner ring, and a twist tie. And the things you're going to need are marker, school glue, tape, scissors, and straight edge, and pencil. And a sense of humor. Yes. Okay. So this was our first go at him, and I thought this was a little more difficult than, we wanted to, than I wanted to deal with. So... We have a new version that's going to be a little easier, I think. So, in your bag, this is what you're going to need. You're going to need your little fish shape, his teeth, and, uh, and your clothespin. So, I'm just going to show you 
how to do your straight edge and I'm gonna do it with a blue marker because I want you to be able to see it and on camera I don't know that you'll be able to see it let me scoot these things over if I don't do it with a marker so I'm going to put him down or actually going to do it right through the middle of his mouth is what we're going for so wherever that lands on his caudal fin let's see that's what we're going to cut okay now see he's a little off i'm just going to go ahead and tell you so we're going to do that one more time so don't feel bad you got two sides to work with and the back side's not really going to be seen so go i'm going to go again toward the middle all right i'm not all about the perfection you don't have to worry about that all right, and I did it again, but it's okay. This one's better. So then you're just gonna cut right on that line. And you got your two pieces. So then what I did was I, I'm gonna show you with your clothespin, you can use school glue too. So I will tell you this, I'm just showing you this part because this is the most difficult part. But I would say before you do this, go ahead and decorate your fish. And here's what I will tell you. All I did was I took a marker of my, the choice of uh, color of my own choosing and this made dots because that's kind of the pattern that we've been seen, uh, shown for piranha. And if you want to outline them, lay them on something and just go around the outside of them, which is what I did and then um, we're ready to do this step now. So, then you go like this. Uh, and keep the top on the top, obviously. And um, also remember my fish, I drew on him for you guys to be, um, so you could see it. Yours is not going to look like this because you're going to use a pencil. It's not going to show up like it does on mine. And so, and then you mash them together. Make sure he matches up the way he's supposed to. And then go ahead and glue. And you can see that part of him is still flopping around at the back. This is where I use tape. Now, you don't have to do that if you don't want to. But you're just going for that. Okay, um, and the other thing, you're gonna have a little set of white teeth in there. And let me show you the back of this one. What you're going to want it to look like is you're gonna glue it to the top. Now, if you, you wanna kind of like put little marks on his teeth, do that before you start trying to glue him down. Glue it on the back right at the top. Okay, and so I'm going to do that and show you what comes out. Okay. Let's see here. There you go. And you'll just line him up with that. With the clothespin. Oops. See, my little thing is not dry yet. Let me put a little more on here. So again, I urge you to use school glue and just wait a little while, let him dry and then you can come back to him. Okay, but so just to show you, you can see his teeth down. Oh, and he keeps falling. All right, but you get the idea of what to do. Yeah, there you go, there he is. All right, so the other thing that's gonna happen, I'm gonna use him because he's all taped and glued securely together, is you're gonna take your biggest, your biggest eye, that's the one I used, and put on him, give him a big old eyeball, and here, I'm gonna do both sides because it's not doing what I want. <laughs> Oh, and the glue. Yeah. Use the school glue. Don't do what I did. <laughs> All right. So here you go. There's our piranha. 
chomp chomp okay and Julia and I So these are just fun, fun little fish tail thingies to play with. We're going to learn about some more fish, and then we're going to be back with another craft. <laughs> 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 Yeah, these are a lot of fun. Yes. <laughs> Don't torment your friends too much, but, but a little bit. A little bit, like, <laughs> just a tiny bit. <laughs> So next, um, I wanted to talk about some well, beautiful aquarium fish, even though sometimes we don't see them all in aquariums. Um, one of the most common is an angelfish. I have an image here of an emperor angelfish. Hmm. Um, now what's interesting is uh, there's a lot of different types or species of angelfish. So some actually live in freshwater, um, which uh, means that there's no salt in the water at all, but most live in the ocean. Um, so you have a few varieties that are freshwater, but most of them are saltwater varieties. Um, what's really interesting about the saltwater angelfish, though, is when they are juveniles, when they are not quite babies, but, uh -huh. you know, they're, they're younger, younger. Mm -hmm. and they haven't actually become adults yet, they look completely different. I mean, they have the same shape, but that's about it. So <laughs> you can see here, um, you know, they look as juveniles really kind of cool. Like they have this little spirally thing. I think that would be a fun craft too. Um, and then, uh, then this other image, it's of the emperor angelfish as an adult. So totally different. Same fish. Huh? Weird. <laughs> and that's what I'm learning about just the the underwater world. Is it, it's, it's unusual. <laughs> um, the next fish I wanted to talk to you all about is the lionfish. Now this is a beautiful fish. Um, it probably came to the United States um, as an aquarium fish. Unfortunately, this fish has now been released into the wild. And um, unlike where it's, it's originally from the South Pacific, um, but here, where it's been released in the bottom part of the United States and in the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean, it's really harming the environment. Um, it has these little spikes on it. You can see sharks avoid it because <laughs> they, do, it, they don't know what it is. They yeah. don't necessarily want to eat it. Um, the, the spikes, uh, they are a type of fin. They are filled with um, venom which is a type of poison, and they're like needle sharp. Um, so I, I can see why the sharks are not so into eating them, but they have no known predators in this area. So when they eat, <laughs> they, they really eat, you know? So they, they're, they're not being hunted by anything, but they also have this way of feeding where they will, instead of eating a little bit and moving on like a lot of other predatory fish, they will just sit in the same place, or swim, in the same place <laughs> and just eat and eat and eat and eat until it's gone. Um, so I, I do think they're really beautiful. They are. Just a little problematic, they're, but yeah. beautiful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and there's like, there are some really funny internet images that I'm not able to share of, of humans trying to feed sharks the lionfish. <laughs> Nothing bad has happened so far, but it doesn't seem like a good idea. <laughs> Not recommended. <laughs> but they're really cool to look at. And then the last fish I wanted to talk to you about in our little aquarium fish um, group is the betta fish. Um, this is also known as the Siamese fighting fish. They were actually, um, they did actually fight for sport. Um, huh. but it, it's not like what you would think. It's not like to the death, like <laughs> some other animals that have been uh, treated that way. Um, it's really more about posturing. So in the fight, it would be, um, whichever betta fish swam away. Oh. 
Oh, yeah, so, okay. and they would be the loser. Then. You know, okay. They were treated. So they lived. <laughs> they lived, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was, it's not a, not really, from what I understand, what I read, um, it wasn't a very brutal kind of thing. Oh. But they are really um, aggressive. Um, <laughs> they're not going to necessarily attack all other kinds of fish it's generally more than males but um they they are they are pretty aggressive okay <laughs> um and the males have these beautiful long fins and females look much different really yeah. they, they really look quite different they're not quite as pretty it's kind of sad in the fish world that seems to be the, mm, the truth form. yes um and i should have said they are originally from areas like cambodia and, and thailand um, one thing you should also know about betta fish is they are commonly used as decorations almost. Um, hmm. You know, you see them in these really cool, small, ornamental um, bowls. Oh. But the truth is, is that's really not good for them. They need more space than what sometimes you'll see in like home decorating oh, kinds see. of situations. They, they, they need. They Big need space. space, yeah, and they need water that's actually fairly warm, 79 degrees. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's pretty warm. <laughs> so, yeah. um, they're really beautiful fish, though. They're very interesting. On to making betta fish. Okay, so here's what you should have left in your pack. An egg, two eyeballs, and a little pipe cleaner ring, along with two different um, kinds of tissue paper. So with your bigger piece of tissue paper, this is what we're gonna do. Oh, and a twist tie. So we're first just gonna put him in the center-ish, and you don't have to do anything in specific, really. We're just gonna twist him up a little bit. And that's how we're gonna make our fish body. <clears throat> Isn't that cool? It just kind of works out like a little fish head. And so, then we're going to twist, twist away. Twist, twist, twist. There we go. And there's our body. And then if I were you, I would fluff out. Now, if he doesn't fluff out like you want him to, just give him a little... little scissoring and there you go see from the side from the back I like him now all right so <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and say use this glue <laughs> and we're gonna put on his eyeballs Oop. and there's that and of course you can use glue sticks I don't see why it wouldn't work but I'm gonna use definitely this for the mouth ring because it's the fluffy and I don't know about you guys but whenever you do more fabricy stuff with glue sticks it's just a lot harder to get it to do what you want and stick so there he is and that's all gonna dry very clear so as you can see he does not have any of his little fins yet so we're going to put him to the side, and you should have two little pieces of paper that kind of are matching. This is totally up to you as to what kind of cutting you want to do. I want mine to be a little bit like long. I want to use mostly the length of the, the page and just curve it around a bit. So that's it. I'm going to do that, and I would cut them at the same time so you have equals. And if you want, because I'm, I'm thinking now that I'm looking at it, I like it enough to, I'm going to put a, just a little crimp in it. And then you're going to take it side by side. And then use your tape. This is where the tape comes in handy. Just put it like that. And then <clears throat> you're going to tape it to the side. And see, there's one. I'm gonna do the other one. And I, and you're noticing that I flipped it back. I didn't want to use the whole bit of it, but I wanted something for the tape to grab onto. 
So that's why I did that. And there. There's our little beta fish. So he's so easy, but he's also very cute to me. So I liked him. So I hope you like making them. I'm very mature. Um, okay, so I wanted to also kind of close on, we talked a bit about unusual fish. Now, I wanted to talk about two unusual fish, one I was not familiar with originally, um, and that is the box fish. It looks, it looks like a box. <laughs> um, <laughs> it has kind of this Hard, it's called a carapace, but it's like basically shell material. So it has um, a hard carapace that makes it look like a box. Um, they are actually sometimes also called cowfish because a lot of them have these oh. horn like things <laughs> on their foreheads. I know, it's just a strange fish. Um, and they are eaten by humans, but. Um, and they're considered pretty tasty. Hmm. You have to be careful when you handle them because apparently they kind of eject or release a kind of toxin oh. um, that can kill the other fish that they're with. So just something to be careful about, but apparently people really like to eat them. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and then the next one is one we might have seen before, yeah. which is the puffer fish or um, a blowfish. Yeah. And they're called this because they literally will inflate themselves like a balloon, or I've seen it's, you know, a globe, as some yes. people say, whenever they feel threatened. Um, they are poisonous. <laughs> they, they are poisonous, and yet people also eat them as yes. well. And unlike um, the, the boxfish, where it's just like getting rid of the, um, the toxins, these are, if you ingest the wrong part of the pufferfish, you, you could die. Um, and they eat it in Japan. It's called fugu, and you have to be a specially trained chef to be able to prepare it. I personally don't plan on trying <laughs> fugu unless I know it's towards that end. But, <laughs> but um, you know, on the way out. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I'm, even then, I'm just like, mm. <laughs> maybe not. You know, I don't see the point. But many people do enjoy it. So, and it's a really interesting fish that I wanted to share with you all. It's a closing note. So, um, we wanted to, um, I just wanted to thank you all for watching. Yes. I think that's pretty much all of our, all of our stuff today. So, yeah. thank you. Um, keep an eye out on our calendar for virtual and now in-person programs. Oh, that's right. So, um, we're very excited about that and see you soon. All right. Bye-bye.